In this video, I add a splash of color and create an image that you can take whatever the weather. Adorama TV presents Take and Make Great Photography with Gavin Hoey, where you'll learn how to take stunning photos and then polish them in post-production. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that has everything for us photographers. Wow, look at that weather out there. Winter. Who on earth wants to go out and take pictures in weather like that? <laughs> uh, anyway, so if the weather outside is not playing ball for you, then I've got a great indoor shoot for you to do whatever the weather. Don't forget to check out Adorama's latest contest and your chance to win amazing prizes. So the idea is that we're going to photograph a splash of colour, quite literally in fact, because I'm going to photograph a lemon being dropped into a glass of water. Now, if you've seen me do splash photography before, then you know we can do this on a really simple, low-budget setup. If you haven't, then go check out the Adorama Learning Center where you can find out lots more information. Now, what I want is a nice, clean, white background. So I've got my little pop-up black and white background on the, the white side, and I'm gonna use my speed light flash to illuminate the background, and then we're gonna backlit the scene. So that's the idea. So I'm gonna get my flash and I'm gonna put it onto manual mode and we're gonna put it down into 1 8th power. Why 1 8th power? Well, you've gotta start somewhere and that seems like a good place to begin. Chances are we'll need to change it, but for now, we'll pop it down at 1 8th. For the camera, I'm gonna work in M for manual. I'm gonna be on a 200th of a second shutter speed. I'll choose F8 as my aperture and I'm gonna start at ISO 200. I may end up changing that, but that's again, a good place to begin. I'm on a tripod because, well, I'm not going to be able to press the button, drop the lemon and do everything whilst I'm behind the camera. So a tripod is really important for this shoot, as is a little remote release just to trigger everything. Now there's one more thing I need to do. My speed light is already set so it's in its slave mode, but the actual camera itself, I need to pop up the little flash to trigger the, the main flash and that's going to act as a master and then the speed light as a slave. Finally, there's one more piece of equipment that I always have in the studio, but uh, whenever I'm photographing water, it's absolutely vital. That's a really good towel. You're gonna need this, it's gonna get wet. So I've got my glass here. This is the, uh, the thing we're gonna drop the lemon into, and I'm gonna fill it with water, but just to put a little bit more interest inside the glass, I've got some of these. And uh, these are ice cubes, but it's winter. I, I don't want to hold real ice cubes. It's freezing enough as it is. So these are actually fake. These are made out of glass. So you can pick up glass or perspect ice cubes, or of course you can use real ones if you like. So let's just add those carefully inside. So once you've got your shot framed up, here's a really good tip. Make sure your glass is in focus and then switch from autofocus to manual focus. That way, when you're taking pictures and you're away from the camera, you won't, won't have to worry about it suddenly refocusing and, and missing a great shot. Okay, so let's take a test picture. In fact, let's take one without the flash, just to show you why it's so important. If the flash doesn't fire, then I really don't have a picture. It's almost totally black. No flash, no picture. With the flash going, well, let's take a test picture and see how we go. That white background is not quite as white as I'd like it to be. Now remember, I'm on 1 8th power for the flash, so I've got a little bit of wiggle room here. Let's go and increase the flash power. So I'm going to dial it up from 1 8th to a quarter power. So that's one more stop of light. That's going to make things brighter. That, that may well be just the right solution. Let's take the same shot again. Here we go. Yeah, that's better. I've definitely got more white. Yeah, I'm losing a little bit still. There's a bit of grey on the background. Now, I don't want to go any more on the flash than a quarter power because the freezing power of the flash, the reason water comes out frozen and sharp is because the flash only lasts for a very short period of time. At a quarter power, the duration is about a four thousandth of a second. If I increase the flash power, then effectively I change the shutter speed and I would end up with water that's not quite as sharp. So I don't want to go any more than a quarter power, but I can still change the ISO. I'm on 200 ISO at the moment. Okay, well, let's just pop it up to 400 ISO and we'll see how that changes the shot. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so 400 ISO, 
quarter power on the flash, F8, we're ready to go. So I'm ready to start taking pictures. I've got my, my lemon now sliced up and the water's ready. I know the, the camera's set. So all I need to do is drop this perfectly into the water and press the button at the exact moment when it creates a perfect splash. Yeah, this isn't gonna happen in one shot, is it? This is gonna take a few goes, but here we go. We'll line things up. I'll try and remember to get high enough so my hand's not in the frame. And splash. Okay, well, how did that go? Well, that's not too bad. That's a, a pretty good splash, but there's probably a better one in here somewhere. So let's get my lemon back and we'll, we'll top up the water. There we go. And we'll go again. And this really is a numbers game. The more you do this, the more chance of getting a good splash. Yeah, you just gotta get the timing right. So let's top that up once more. Get the lemon and we'll drop it in. Excellent. Okay, so I've got a really good shot there. Now, if you don't get it after a couple of goes, you're going to need just to wipe down your, your surface here and, well, try again. But remember, if you do wipe down your surface, if you move your camera or your um, glass of water, you've got to refocus. Remember, you're on manual focus. So if anything changes, that could cause you problems. And you don't want to miss a shot because it's out of focus. Let's just do one more. Here we go. Wow, big splash. Fantastic. Now, once you've got a really good shot that you're happy with, the temptation is to stop. You've got the picture, well done. But maybe try a couple of other ideas and try going closer. So I'm gonna reframe, go closer, and just take loads more pictures. Okay, so there we go. We've got lots of pictures, some good, some bad, but remember, we only really need one great picture, and we're gonna find that and run it through Photoshop right now. So of course, when I said Photoshop, what I meant, Photoshop Lightroom, because Lightroom is the perfect tool for editing lots of pictures like that shoot. So let's see how it's done. So what I've got here are just a few of the pictures that I shot, and you'll see that the glass doesn't change shot to shot, the lighting doesn't change, only the splash changes. And on some it's very good, others it's um, not so good, I think that's not so good. Uh, that one, that one's a great shot. And these literally are one sequence of images. Yeah, not so good. So I'm gonna choose my picture to process, which will be this one here. And the great thing about Lightroom is when you process one picture and you wanna repeat it on lots of pictures, it can do it automatically and pretty much instantly. So first thing to do is have a look at this white background. Is this white background as white as I thought it was? Now, when I took my pictures, I looked at the back of the camera and I had the highlight warning blinking away saying that background is nice and bright and white. Trouble is, the back of the camera shows you a JPEG image, so it's processed by the camera, and I shoot in RAW. So these are the unprocessed pictures, and that white background isn't quite white. So let's go and have a little look. So if I turn on the, the clipping warning there for the highlights, and I come down to the whites and increase the whites, that's what I'm seeing on the back of the camera. So if you're shooting high key and you're processing in Lightroom 4 or Lightroom 5 or Photoshop CS6 or CC, then you find you do have to bump up the white slider to get it to look more like the back of your camera. Now, whilst I'm here, I'm gonna push up the clarity, two reasons, partly because this really does work well with clarity, but mostly because I just like clarity. Next, we're gonna make some local adjustments and we're gonna use the adjustment brush. Now the adjustment brush, first of all, I need to reset all of these sliders. Nice little Lightroom trick. Double click on the word effect. Everything goes back to zero. Now all I wanna do actually is just increase the, the brightness, the exposure where it's not quite as bright as it could be. So let's just push this up, maybe sort of three quarters of a stop, something like that. And I'm just gonna paint across the top and round the bottom, just roughly painting in a little bit extra light 
like so. Now you'll see not everywhere went um, as, as sort of white as it could. So I'll click on the new button to make another brush and repeat it. We'll start somewhere different so the pin starts in a different place. Otherwise you have all the pins on top of each other and it gets all confusing. Okay, so there we go, that looks pretty good. I can turn off the highlight warning. Yeah, that's fine. Now whilst we're making local adjustments, let's zoom in a little bit closer and see what we can do with the inside of the glass. So let's start with the lemon here. Now the lemon looks pretty good, but it's not as good as some of the other lemon shots. It's gone over on a bit of an angle. I'm gonna click on the new button and I'm gonna leave the exposure about where it is, but I'm also gonna push up the saturation. So with this brush, I'm changing both exposure and saturation at the same time. And we can give that lemon a nice little push in brightness. Now the rest of the glass looks pretty good. Now, it's worth noting, have a look at the edges of the glass. Can you see there's these nice dark strips around the outside and also around the outside of the, the splashes as well? Now, those are me. Yep, there's a reason I'm wearing dark clothes for this shoot because I want those nice dark edges around the glassware and the splash, so you need to have something dark. In this case, just me wearing dark clothes was enough. The, the other side is dark because, well, there was just a big empty dark room facing in the other direction. If you don't have dark clothes or a, a dark room, then you're gonna wanna have something like some black flags, so just black material or some black boards, just to give you that nice edge in dark color. Okay, so uh, the actual rest of the glass, what I'll do is just make another new brush. And this time I'm gonna reset everything and just decrease the highlights so they're not quite as bright and remove any saturation because I don't want any color in these parts of the picture. I only want the color to come from that yellow lemon and there is just a hint of color there. Other than that, everything else looks pretty much monochromatic. Okay, so there we go. Let's fit that back onto the screen and there's the picture completed. Now, the lovely thing about Lightroom is its speed at which you can copy that effect onto all the other pictures. Here's how it's done. On the film strip, I'm just gonna press Control A and they all become selected. Then I can click on the Sync button and say, yep, check all, synchronize. And every picture gets exactly the same treatment, exactly the same. So let's just go through them and see, yep, they've all got the same processing and they all look good. And now they're all processed, you can make an informed and educated decision about which one you like. I think that one looks pretty good too. However, you might find if you're painting little things like the lemon, you will need to repaint that from shot to shot. But that one's my favorite picture, and there's my final image. Now, if you're in New York City on the 25th of February, 2014, and you'd like to spend the day with me talking about photography and taking some great pictures, well, you're in luck. For one day only, I'm gonna be running a series of workshops and seminars. Adorama have made it all possible and it's completely free. All you need to do is jump over to the Adorama website and register. Tickets are strictly limited, first come, first served. However, if you want to see more videos from me and the other amazing presenters here on Adorama TV, you know what you've got to do, hang on. You've got to click on the subscribe button. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching. Do you want great looking prints at low cost? Be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.